Today I'm going to show you how to change the rear brake pads and rotors on this Chrysler 300. Start removing the wheel with a 13 16 inch socket. Now Chrysler uses these terrible lug nuts that have these sheet metal caps on them. So you may have to use a socket the size bigger like a 7 8 Now find the rear tire jack point. It should be like a little rubber disc looking thing. You can see it. It's right there. That's all the lug nuts are off. Just remove the wheel. Side. Take a 15 millimeter socket and Remove the two caliper slide pin bolts in the top and the bottom. You might need something to hold this slide pin in place while it rotates. It's got hex flats cast into it. So I'm just grabbing one of the pair of pliers or a wrench. Whatever's convenient at the time. Do the same thing for the bottom bolt. And you can just stuff the caliper on top of the CV axle shaft or something. Even if you're just replacing the pads only, you need to grease the slide pins. Just gently rotate while pulling them out of the boot. Just wipe off the old grease. I don't like mixing old and new. Just apply the new grease. And just take the pin, feed it back into the boot while rotating it once it's in there. Rotating it helps spread the grease around evenly. And just kind of give it a workout. In and out, side to side, round and round. Just helps spread the grease around. Sure to wipe off any excess grease globs because you don't want them to find their way to the pads or rotor surface. And just repeat the same thing for the other slide pin, but don't get them mixed up. Sometimes they're different. Now you have to remove the caliper bracket. If you're just changing the pads, you can skip this. There's two bolts to hold the caliper bracket on to, 18 millimeter bolts. Bottom and one on the top. Just take your 18 millimeter and remove them.
repeat the same thing for the bottom bolt. pads out of there. Scoot up they are. Metal to metal. And that's the reason why we're replacing the rotor too. Now it's time to remove the rotor. If you're just changing the pads you can skip this. If they're factory rotors they're gonna have these retaining tabs that you have to cut off. Take a pry tool like a door panel opener, get it away from the rotor. Take some tin snips, or something, and just cut it. Get on those pliers to get rid of it. And then do the same thing for the other one. At that point, the rotor should just pull right off. If the rotor doesn't pull easily, then it's most likely rusted in place. So in that case, you just take something like PB Blaster and spray it along the hub. And inside each of these little spaces where the lugs come through. And then spin it. And it's not a bad idea to... You know, smack the rotor on the other side to get it moving if you're replacing the rotor anyway. It doesn't matter if you hit it with a hammer. And then that usually gets things moving if it's seized. Thankfully, this one just pulls right off. And here's a good chance to inspect your emergency brake shoes. These look like they're in excellent condition, plenty of material left. So we won't bother with those. You have to prepare the new rotor. Every rotor is shipped with a thin layer of oil on them to stop them from rusting. So you need to take some brake cleaner and just take it first and spray it off as best you can. Both sides. Spraying it off usually isn't enough to get all the oil off, so I just like to take some cardboard, spray it down with the brake cleaner, and just use it since it's slightly abrasive. Go around the surface of the rotor. side. Just a final spray down. And then just slide it on hub. Once new rotor's in place, just take the old take the caliper bracket, one of the bolts, get it roughly in position, start one of the bolts. Leave the one bolt loose until you get the other one started. Now 
Once they both start at least four turns, you can start torquing them down. I like to get these two at least a quarter turn past snug. Bottom one. <sighs> Normally, I like to torque them down to the torque specification, but it's so hard to get a torque wrench in here. All right, just take new pads and guide these metal tabs into their respective grooves. Back button. Now you need to compress the caliper piston back into the caliper. So take an old brake pad and a C-clamp. Position for it. Yeah, start pressing. The piston should move very easily. If it doesn't, and you're having to put a lot of effort into turning the forcing screw on the C-clamp, it means you probably have a stuck caliper and it should be replaced. But this one's moving very easily, so no problems here. All the way in. Feed this back in here. It's very important that the brake line doesn't have any kinks in it and it goes back naturally the way it was because you don't want to have any bends or anything in your brake line, obviously. You may have to squeeze in the uh, slide pins a little bit to get the caliper to fit. Squeeze those in, slide it in place. And take the slide pin bolts, start those. Leave the one hand tight until you get the other one started. Again, take some pliers or something to hold the slide pin from turning. 15 millimeter socket. Just crank them down. These don't have to be super tight. Just about an eighth of a turn pass snug is enough. Otherwise, you could strip them out. They are small bolts. Do the same thing for the bottom bolt. On the opposite side is the exact same procedure. It's just a mirror image of it. Now at this point you're ready to put the wheel back on. I like to use an actual torque wrench to tighten down the lug nuts. For these I'll take them down to 100 foot-pounds. It's always better to use a torque wrench when you can because you never want to take any chances with your wheels coming off. Just do a basic crisscross pattern, nothing special.
if they're all torqued, just go around and make sure they all took torque. Go back over them. Once you've got everything installed, just go inside the cab with the engine off and pump the brake pedal until you get a stiff pedal. That's going to refill all those caliper pistons you compressed. This is a very important safety step because if you get in and you just try to drive, you'll go to step on the brakes and you'll have no pedal. Pump until you get firm pedal and you're done. If this video helped you, please like and subscribe. Thanks for watching.